video for a while, but I just haven't yet because I keep, I don't know, making up excuses, I guess. Um, usually somebody's always home and I just wanted to be by myself so I wouldn't get interrupted. Or I'll feel like I want to make this video, but I'll, I'll have just gotten upset or something and I'm like, oh, you've been crying, don't make it, but I'm probably going to start crying anyway, so. Um, well, for those of you who don't know me or haven't heard anything about my story, my name is Rachel and I gave birth to my son, Travis Reich Song, on November 23rd, 2018, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, he was going to go by Reich, his middle name. Um, but anyways, my son was born at 41 weeks, exactly, and he was still born, and I've just been really open about my story because it's, it's really helped me to see other women who have been through the same thing. It helps me to see their stories and you know how far they've come and how they've dealt with the loss. Um, and I've seen other people make you know their stillbirth story videos just so they can have it to look back on and that's kind of mainly what I want to do this for. Just I. It's already been four months and I feel like I've forgotten, you know, certain details that I wanted to remember. And those couple of days in the hospital are the only memories I have of my son, you know, outside of my body. So, I guess I'll just kind of start with, um, the night before I had him. So it was Thanksgiving and his due date was six days prior and I was so anxious for him to get here. Um, I found out really early on in my pregnancy that I was pregnant, probably four weeks pregnant. Um, so that, you know, nine, ten months was a really long wait. <laughs> and. I figured he was gonna come late, a little bit anyway. But I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and I was not having any real contractions. Like the whole end of my pregnancy, I had Braxton Hicks like constant, just nonstop. And they were really strong. They weren't painful, but they just, I don't know, they were just constant. And I went to the hospital two weeks prior because I thought I was leaking amniotic fluid and I just wanted to be safe, so I went to the hospital. And they sent me a labor and delivery and they said everything was fine, there was plenty of fluid, I wasn't leaking, and they said I was already dilated to a three. And she said, um, you know, I think that you'll probably go into labor soon, probably within the next week, so I was super excited. And she told me that if I came back to the ER, that they were probably going to find a reason to induce me, which I thought was really weird. And I was really against being induced. I was actually planning to deliver at a birthing center with just a midwife and all natural. Everybody kept telling me I was crazy. Um, but you know, if you haven't felt that pain, then you don't know how bad it's actually going to be. Anyway, so I left the hospital and his due date came and went. So it's Thanksgiving. I was, you know, glad to get to go to Thanksgiving. I was kind of hoping he would wait to come after that just so I could see my family and everything, and he did. So I went to Thanksgiving and I was so exhausted the whole day. I took like three naps when I was there and I was just so uncomfortable. And when we were all sitting around after dinner, um, I was kind of leaned back in the chair and Reich was moving around like crazy and you could just see him rolling across my belly and it was weird because his movements usually weren't that big to where like other people notice them 
Um, but you know, my whole family was just sitting around watching him move and I was starting to have my first real contractions. Like they weren't painful yet, but I could tell they were, you know, real and you could just see my belly going crazy. Anyways, so the time came to leave that night, probably around 9 p.m. And when I stood up from the chair, my whole family's like, wow, look how much your, your belly has dropped. Like just since you've been here, it's so low. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm having contractions now. Like, I'm going to have this baby tomorrow. He's going to be here. And everybody was excited. And the whole ride home, I was having contractions, like, nonstop. But they weren't super painful. Um, so we got home. And I was able to lay down and go to sleep. Because I knew he was coming. But I was so tired. I was just... I was like, please just let me get a few hours of sleep and then I'm gonna wake up and it's gonna be time. And I was so excited. So I wake up the next morning at about 10 a.m. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. Um, I woke up at about 10 a.m. And I remember going into my mom's room and sitting on the edge of the bed and just telling her that, you know, I hope Reich's gonna come today and shortly after that I started having contractions again and I went and sat on the couch in the living room and my mom came in there and I remember she put on um like breathing videos uh like how to breathe during birth she put them on YouTube and she was along with the videos and I remember it was so annoying and she was getting on my nerves because I was in pain and I just wanted her to be quiet and leave me alone but she wouldn't so I got up and went to my room and I just sat in the bed and then my contractions started to get more painful so um after a while I told my mom like these are coming non-stop they hurt uh call my midwife and just let her know that I'm in labor and plus I was already dilated to a three almost two weeks ago. So I'm thinking this baby's just gonna slide out. Um, anyway, so she calls my midwife and I'm in the middle of brushing my teeth and I'm pausing as I'm having contractions cause it hurts, you know? And my midwife tells her, well, you know, I just don't think there's any way she's in active labor yet, but you can come and I'll check you out if you want, but I'm sure that it's going to be a while. This is your first baby. You could just stay at home. And I don't know why, but it just, it really annoyed me because I have a high, I have a high tall, a high pain tolerance anyways, but like I knew that I was in labor. <laughs> so I just stayed home for a little bit longer. And at this point I am on all fours on my bed with my face down and I'm crying and I'm just breathing through my contractions and it freaking hurts and I'm thinking all right maybe everybody was right you are crazy like I this is not even as bad as it's gonna get it's gonna get way worse and so I start telling my mom you know I think that I might want to just go to the hospital I think I want an epidural because this is effing painful <laughs> so we're kind of deciding if that's what I'm gonna do or not and my mom's best friend came over to bring me a birthing ball to sit on and you know, she was trying to tell me, you can, you can do this. Like, you don't need to go to the hospital. Stick to your plan. It'll be over. You know, whatever, whatever. And she's like, just get in the bath. And I'm like, I don't want to get in the freaking bath. Like, I just want to stay where I am. I'm in pain. But they get me up and put me in the bath. And um, as I'm sitting there, I see a little bit of blood. And... It was my, my mucus plug, so I call my mom in there, and at that point I've decided, like, I'm going to the hospital. This hurts too bad. Um, so all my baby stuff was already packed up and ready to go since we were past his due date, so we loaded up the diaper bag and his car seat, and, you know, I just threw on my robe and I had on my pajamas, and, you know, I just whatever and I had been seeing a midwife um, in another city so I just had to pick a hospital so I decided on the hospital that I went to two weeks prior when I went to the ER because my best friend had actually just delivered her daughter there three weeks before I had my son um, 
and she had been sent in early and she was induced because she had high blood pressure and she just had a really good experience with the hospital so that's where I decided to go but that's a whole nother video so we load all the stuff up in the car and uh I, I remember leaving the apartment we live on the 11th floor in downtown um so we have to take the elevators down and I'm, I'm just stopping, you know, halfway down the hallway and in the elevator and when we get to the front desk, I have to sit down because my contractions are just, they just keep coming and they hurt. And so we get in the car and we're driving to the hospital and I'm trying to tell my mom how to get there because she's never been. Luckily it's less than 10 minutes away and um, I just remember being like, oh my God. Like there was just no way to get comfortable like to s just be sitting in a car having contractions is horrible so um, I decided to call the hospital on the way there even though I can barely talk because I definitely could not walk at this point and I wanted my mom to just pull up to the ER and then bring a wheelchair and just take me inside so driving to the hospital and I remember my mom keeps going over these damn speed bumps <laughs> just flying over them like I don't have a nine pound baby in my belly just bouncing while I'm having contractions it's terrible <laughs> so we get to the ER and somebody comes out with a wheelchair and I sit down and my mom goes to park the car and the lady takes me inside to the ER and there's a freaking line and I had to wait in line. So I'm sitting in the wheelchair just like having contractions, making all these weird faces in my pajamas and I, it's finally my turn and she's like, um, what can I help you with? I'm like, I'm in labor. She's like, oh, okay, well, you know, how many weeks are you? 41. Um, give her my information and they call somebody down from labor and delivery and they start wheeling me up um, and I remember the nurse had a she put a backpack on and I was like what's that for she's like well you know just in case we have to deliver the baby here in the hallway or in the elevator and she's like it's happened before and that is the last place you want to deliver a baby is on the disgusting hospital floor and I'm like you're right you know I've held him in this long I'm gonna keep him in until we get to the room so she wheels me into an empty labor and delivery room and another nurse comes in and she gives me this gown to put on and it's the same gown I put on two weeks before and it's the same kind of room that I was in two weeks before um, my mom is in there at this point so I go into the bathroom and I take my pajamas off and I put this robe on and I get into the hospital bed <clears throat> and my mom's sitting on the couch next to me and this little nurse comes in a little brunette nurse I don't remember her name I had a ton of nurses when I was there I wish I could remember their names because they were all great um, so she comes over to put the little you know monitor to monitor the baby's heart rate on my belly and she kind of goes to do it for a second and my mom and I are talking and you know she stops and walks away and me and my mom are you know deep in conversation and I'm having contractions so I'm not really paying attention um, so she comes back in with a doctor and they have an ultrasound machine and they're getting that ready and kind of doing it and I'm not thinking anything of it I thought it was normal because when I came in two weeks prior they brought an ultrasound machine in and you know looked at my baby and the fluid plus they didn't have any of my records because I was a walk-in at this hospital so I thought you know they just want to see make sure he's turned and whatever whatever so they bring another doctor in and I'm still not thinking anything I'm just like okay maybe this is the doctor that's gonna deliver you know it's fine um, and then one of the doctors asks, uh, when was the last time you felt your baby move? And I'm still not phased by any of it. And I said, um, last night for sure on Thanksgiving, you know, he was, everybody was watching him move around. I was like, but I don't, I don't know if I felt him move today. I can't remember. 
and I've been in so much pain that I just don't know. I don't know. And my mom just, you know, in the middle of that shoots back, like, why is something wrong? And the first doctor that came in, he looked at me and said, um, I'm looking at your baby and it looks like there's no blood flow to his brain and I can't find a heartbeat and I believe that your baby is deceased inside of you and my mom said <laughs> she was like oh my god I'm gonna throw up and she got up and went to the bathroom and I just kind of sat there and stared at them and they weren't saying anything and I was getting mad. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? And they were like, well, you know, we're gonna have to deliver him. I'm like, well, yes. <laughs> I said, well, am I gonna, am I gonna have to be induced? Because I really don't want to be induced. And they're like, well, you know, your contractions are coming and we're going to check to see how dilated you are, but we don't want to leave him in there longer than necessary because we don't want you to get an infection. You know, whatever, my mom comes back in and um, okay. And they're like, do you want an epidural? And I'm like, yes, I want an epidural. I want an epidural, like... 20 minutes ago, I went an epidural. I was in so much pain at this point. So, I don't even, I don't remember this part, but my mom says, um, you know, they kind of walk out to give us a minute. And she said something to me like, Rachel or whatever. And I just said, I don't want to fucking talk about it. And I don't remember saying that, but that's what she told me. So, um, I think before the doctors left, I kind of asked them, like, actually, no, that was later. So anyways, it's me and my mom in there, um, they, they check me, she leaves and they check me and I'm four centimeters dilated, so I am in active labor, um, they said as long as my, you know, as long as I was dilating on time or whatever, I can't think right now, um, that they wouldn't have to give me Pitocin or anything. So I was glad about that because even though I wanted an epidural, I still wanted to deliver my son vaginally. I didn't want to have to have a C-section and I didn't want to have to be induced. I wanted him to just come when he was ready to come. Although looking back now, of course, I wish I would have not been so against being induced and maybe my son would be here. Um, anyway, so I was dilated to a four. And at this point, I still have not cried. I have still just kind of don't believe it. But do at this, I don't know. Um, so... My mom leaves the room again, they come back with the epidural. They offered to give me pain meds while I was waiting on the epidural. Um, but they said they that the pain meds would make me tired. And I honestly really don't like pain medication. It makes me nauseous. So I didn't want it. I wanted to be awake because I didn't know how long I was going to get with my son. Um, so I wanted to be awake and I wanted to remember. I didn't want to be all foggy. So I just waited for the epidural, but luckily they they had it in there really, really quickly, um, and it, it went pretty quick. It was, I remember them telling me, like, you know, bend over, lean forward, and relax, and I'm trying, and I, you know, they kept having to tell me to, you know, you're not relaxing enough, and I'm just thinking, how can I relax? Like, you just told me that I'm about to have to give birth to my dead baby, and it was just annoying, so... Get the epidural and a few minutes later like 
so much of my pain is relieved and I can breathe easier. Um, so when you have an epidural, you can still feel the contractions, but it just feels like a lot of tightening and pressure. It's not painful. Anyway, so after that, my mom went into the hallway to call my grandparents and my family and everything. And so I decided that I needed to call my son's dad because, um, gosh, that's a whole nother video too. <laughs> Um, he, he and I were not really close during my pregnancy. Um, Um, he was not there for me, um, you know, most of the times that I asked him to be during my pregnancy, in the day of when I went into labor, I decided that I didn't want him to be there when Reich was born because my whole pregnancy had been you know, so stressful, just having to deal with all that. Um, anyways, I had, you know, asked him to come to a lot of my ultrasounds and birthing classes and just things like that. And, you know, he couldn't make the time to come and I felt like I really needed his support during those things, even though we were divorced when we got pregnant. You know, I just, you know, I was growing our child inside of me and I needed him there for some things and he wasn't. And so when I called him to tell him, um, he answered the phone and he already knew I was in labor and I told him. I was like, hi, um, I just wanted to let you know that I decided to come to the hospital instead of the birthing center because I was in a lot of pain and I really wanted to get an epidural. And he's like, okay, I like, so I'm here now. Um, I was like, but there's no heartbeat. And then that's when I started crying and he just said, Baby, I'm so sorry. And he was like, Well, I want to come I want to come see him. Can I come up there? And at this point, he's really the only person that I wanted there, even though I was so pissed off at him. So, I told him where I was, and he was heading up there, and, and I called my best friend, who had just delivered her baby three weeks sooner. We spent our whole pregnancies together, like, we stopped talking a few years ago because we were mad at each other, and then we just started talking, and we just both happened to be, like, she was... She was like nine weeks pregnant and I was eight weeks pregnant and we went through our whole entire pregnancies together, like our baby showers and she was having a little girl and I was having a boy and we said they were gonna be, you know, best friends and we were gonna get to figure out how to be moms together. Anyways, so I call her and she lost a baby about six years ago too. And she was, you know, she was ready to come up there for me, but I told her it was okay because, you know, she just had a baby. So my mom comes back in the room and my grandparents are with her and I'm 
I'm still holding it together. I'm not hysterical or anything. <laughs> I'm really just kind of like, at this point, I'm just so numb and just so, just like, you know, like I'm about to have my baby that I've been waiting for. I've been so excited for it. I'm not even going to get to take him home or hear him cry or anything. So my grandparents, you know, they get there, they're always, they're always there and they're comforting me and I tell them, I tell my mom and then that my son's father's on the way and that when he gets there, if they could just give us a minute. So, you know, not much time goes by and my son's dad walks into the room and he's carrying a, um, a gift bag that has some um, you know, stuff for Reich in it. So my grandparents and my mom, they get up to leave and you know, they kind of smile at each other on the way out and right when the door shuts, he comes closer to the bed and then he just fell down on his knees and laid his head down on the bed next to me and just started crying. And I started crying. I was just trying to comfort him. And he was just like, our baby died. Why is why did this happen to us? I don't know. Um so me and him in there for a while while I was still having contractions and it was starting to hurt again kind of and you know he just sat next to me on the bed and I just kind of laid my head on him and cried because I was so scared and I was so sad and I was just so surprised like I was legitimately surprised that he wanted to be there and it's Sounds kind of stupid to say that out loud. Like, why wouldn't he want to be there? But I was legitimately surprised. Like, I thought he didn't care. And so the whole thing was just really, the whole thing was just an emotional mess. But it was, it was comforting for me to at least see that he did care about his son and he did want to see him so um more of my family kind of started coming up and they were all waiting in the waiting room my mom told me that anyway I didn't really want anybody there at the time I'm glad they were there now really glad they were there now but at the time I was like I didn't want anybody there I didn't want anybody around me I didn't want anybody to talk to me I didn't even want anybody to know yet and I don't know. So the doctors come in when, you know, my son's father and I are in there and I ask, how long am I going to get to hold my baby? Actually, the doctor says, do you want to hold your baby? Like after you have, do you want to hold your baby? I was, yes. Yes, I want to hold my baby. <laughs> how long do I get to hold my baby? And he says, well, as long as you want. You know, like we recommend that you separate at some point, but you can see him anytime that you're here. And so that made me feel better that they weren't going to just take him away and, you know, not even let me bond with his little body. Um, I I, so I forget to mention that. The, at the time I got to the hospital, it was it was 3 p.m. So I'm still dilating fine. Um, they didn't have to give me pitocin or anything. Anyway, so uh, I have family in the waiting room just waiting. And my son's dad was in there with me and my mom was in there the whole time until, you know, it was time for me to push. Um... So my mom was in there for the last contraction before I started pushing and I said, I feel like I need to push. And the nurse that was in there at the time, 
the nurse who did my delivery, she was not, I loved all of my nurses and all of my techs and the doctors so much. The nurse who helped me deliver it was a little, I don't know, there was just something about her that wasn't super comforting like the other nurses. Um, but anyway, she told me, well, you know, don't, don't push yet if you really can hold it because we're only allowed to let you push for three hours and then you have to have a c-section and I'm thinking three hours <laughs> like just the thought of pushing for three hours was I never even thought that people had to push that long I should have looked into it more I guess so I tell her nope I need to start pushing so my mom leaves um my son's father was on my left side and the nurse was on my right side and they pull this giant light out of the ceiling and shine it right on me while I'm spread eagle on the birthing table. <laughs> um, and I just remember not feeling relaxed enough to really push. Like I was pushing, but I was half-assing it. Like I just could not relax. I was freaking out inside. Um, so she's telling me, she's explaining to me how to push and I'm trying and it takes me a couple tries to get it right. Cause I'm just, you know, all over the place in my head. So she's got one leg He's got the other leg, and I'm pushing, and pushing, and then I wait and take a break. The doctor comes in probably 10, 15 minutes later, I guess, because that was, because he was coming, he was coming out. Um, and I remember just not really making any sound or saying anything while I was pushing. I was just concentrating. Um, and the nurse just kept saying, keep pushing, push your baby out, push your baby out, his head's out. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, what does his head look like? And my son's dad saying, like, you can see all of his hair and he's so big. And the doctor's like, just keep pushing. So I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And he's like, he's out. And I still can't see him. I'm like, do I need to keep pushing? Like, do I need to keep pushing? No, he's out. He's out. And the dad was like, he's so big. And they laid him on my chest. I've been waiting for that moment for, you know, the whole time. And so they laid him on my chest. And... His little face was like purple and his little mouth was just kind of swollen and he was just blue his whole body and he was just dead weight limp and he wasn't crying his eyes were closed and his little head would just roll And he was so big. Um, my son's father is not a big guy. And I'm not big either. Like, I'm 5'5". Five five. <laughs> His dad's a couple inches taller than me. And he's, you know, small frame. So I was expecting to have this tiny, like, maybe 7 pound baby. And I was expecting him to just be real small. And he was 22 inches long and 8 pounds, 7.3 ounces. And his hands and his feet were huge. He was so big. His head was so big. I couldn't believe that he fit out. He didn't. <laughs> actually because that was another thing after he came out 
I'll talk more about him in a minute. Let's get back to the story. So, I'm holding him. And then I delivered the placenta. And the doctor tells me he has to, he has to sew me back up. I had a second degree tear. Um, so he's, I'm holding Reich and he's sewing me up and I'm just, you know, I keep telling his dad, like, look how cute he is. He's so cute. And I just kept kissing him, kissing his mouth and his nose. He has the same nose as me. He looked just like me. His face was my face and his toes were my toes and his hands were my hands. Like, was everything about him was me. And I was so worried he was going to look like his dad because I didn't want to look at his dad every day. But he looked just like me. Um, and I just remember telling my ex-husband to, like, you know, take pictures of him, take pictures of him because I thought they were going to take him away. And I wanted to have pictures of, like, his nose up close and his ears and his lips and his his belly and his butt like I wanted pictures of everything and the nurse picked Reich up to take him over to the um the little rolling bassinet you know my ex-husband stayed by me and I was like no go with him you know don't let them don't make him lay over there by himself go with him and so they go over there and he's taking pictures of the nurses doing you know the the footprints and the handprints and you know, you don't, when you give birth to a baby and they're stillborn, you don't get a birth certificate, you get a death certificate. So we got like a novelty birth certificate. And I'm still really mad about that because that nurse that I was talking about, who I wasn't a huge fan of, on my novelty birth certificate, she didn't ask me what my baby's name was. She just, where it says name, she wrote, um, she wrote baby boy. And she didn't even write it on the right line. Like, she wrote it on the date line and then put the date where the name, I don't know. It was just, I wish she would have taken a few more seconds to do it right. Since, you know, those are some of the only things I'm going to have for my son. Um, but she took some pictures of him. And she put a diaper on him. And it was a, I remember it was a size one diaper. And I had all these newborn diapers at home that were going to fit him for maybe a day. You know, I'm thinking he's going to be so tiny and then he comes out and he's almost nine pounds and he's almost two feet tall. And I'm just like, what the hell? This is a toddler. Um, so he has this size one diaper on and it was it's just, he was just so big and it fit him. I have it right here. Actually, here's a picture of him. This is one of the ones she took. In his big old diaper. So these are, this is actually what I was talking about is he was standing over there while she was taking these pictures and I didn't want him to be alone. So then she um, swaddled him up in, you know, the little hospital blankets and put one of the little hats on him and gave him back to me and I just held him and stared at him because I had just been waiting so long to do that and he, he was so cute I just kept saying he's so cute he's so cute and I just kept waiting for him to wake up he just looked like he was sleeping um I took him out of his blanket and I my ex-husband helped me undo my gown and put right on my skin because I you know so I could do skin to skin with him even though his skin was cold but he was so soft and I just held him there and he smelled so good <laughs> I was telling somebody um you know he came out and he hadn't had a bath yet they just kind of wiped him off and gave him back to me and I was telling somebody that it was so weird how, you know, he's just covered in, you know, everything he's covered in. And I said, I would have, I would have licked him clean like a cat. <laughs> like, it's, it was crazy how you just, you know, you're not grossed out by your own children. 
would you do anything for them, even if it was gross? <laughs> so, you know, we, uh, son's father held him and, you know, we cried more and he smiled and looked at him and he's telling me, you know, he looks just like you and he's so perfect. Um, and then I had to decide if I wanted everybody to come in and hold him, and I didn't at the time, I really didn't. I wanted everybody to just leave me alone. I just wanted to be alone with my baby. I just wanted to, do, I just wanted to be with him, you know? I was upset, and I've always kind of felt the need to where if I'm upset or something, to just kind of to hold it in at certain times. Because I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable, I guess. Um, but I did not, I did not want to pass my brand new baby around. Um, I did want my mom and my grandparents that were there to get to hold him though, and I told my son's father to tell his parents that if they wanted to come up, they could. Um, so my mom was the first person who came in and my ex-husband was holding Reich at the time and he handed him to her and I just remember the way that she looked at him and her face just, and she just started crying and she was like looking at me and I'm just sitting there looking pissed off still. And she's just like, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. I'm just holding him and crying. Um, so I told her, um, she's like, people want to come in and see him. I was like, okay, fine. They would only let a couple people back at a time. Um, and it's not that I didn't want my family to see him, because I did. It's just that I wasn't planning on having anybody at the birthing center when I had him. You know, it was just going to be my mom and my grandparents. And then I was going to let everybody meet my son at Christmas, um, like, a few weeks later. Just because I really wanted those first few days, especially... Like, just, just me and him. It was just, it was just what I wanted. Anyway, so my grandparents came in, and they took turns holding him, and I took a picture of them holding him, and they were crying, and it was really sad because they lost their son around 20 years ago. A little more than that. Um, so they left and then I don't remember the order that everybody came in but like my aunt came in with my grandma my other grandma um, and they took turns holding him my aunt helped with a lot of my um, like the baby shower decorations and she made Reich blankets and hats and one of the hats I actually took to the hospital is one that she made for him and it was like a, a newborn hat and it said Reich on it and I took it with me to the hospital for him to wear home and I was expecting him to be so small but he was huge and the hat like didn't even fit his head it just kind of it just didn't fit his head because he was so big. Um, I got a picture of her holding him and my cousin came in and she was like the second person I told I was pregnant like right after I found out. I had told her before I was going to take the test that, uh, you know, I think I'm pregnant. I'm going to call you later. So she, I'm glad she got to hold him and my mom's best friend held him and my ex-stepdad was there. Um, 
my dad and his wife came. Um, my Aunt Candy came. My um, son's father's mother came. She got to hold him. But I'm sure there were probably a couple more people that were there that I just can't think of right now, but at the time, I just wanted everybody to leave, and I'm so glad that the people who were important to me got to um, meet my son. Because everybody was, you know, just as excited as I was. Um, so all those people leave, and at this point, it is, um, you know, my grandparents tell me they'll be back tomorrow. Tell them you don't have to, but they are the kind of people who, like, they insist they're going to be there. <laughs> Whether you need them, want them, it doesn't matter, they're going to be there. And I'm so glad they were there now because they helped me with a lot of the things that I was not expecting to have to deal with after delivering my baby. Um, so they ask if I want to be sent to like the postpartum floor or if I want to go to just a regular room and I say I don't care like why would you not take me to postpartum is what I'm thinking um but you know I finally realized later that it was just because they didn't want to make me stay on a floor with all of the other mothers who have just delivered their living babies so they take me to another floor and into a new room um, and my son's father is still with us at this point. Um, actually before they wheeled me to the room, I was holding Reich and they're like, we're going to take you to the next room. And I'm like, okay, do I get to keep my baby? And they're like, well, not while we're transferring you, but we'll, we'll bring him right back. And my heart just... And I guess they could see it in my face. Like, I didn't argue it or anything. But when it came time to move a few minutes later, I had Reich on my chest. And they just threw a sheet over him. And they let me hold him while they took me to the elevator and to the next floor. And I just remember holding him on the way up. And even though he was dead... I just remember being so proud, like, to finally be holding my son that I made, and who I was so excited for, like, I was so proud, because he was so perfect and so cute. Um, so we get to the next room, and his dad, you know, gives him a hug goodbye, kisses him goodbye, and he leaves, and then it's just my mom and I, and my mom's best friend, and my cousin, my cousin was still there, and at this point, I'm exhausted, I haven't eaten all day, I'm just overwhelmed, um, so... Everybody leaves except my mom. My mom was planning on, um, you know, going to the birthing center with me. And if I would have delivered at the birthing center, I would have went home immediately. Um, but since I delivered at the hospital, uh, and, you know, I wanted to stay with my baby. So everybody leaves and they bring in this thing called a cuddle cot. It's, um, so it's like this cooling pad. And it's connected to this machine that like blows cold air through it, I guess. I'm not really sure how it works. Anyway, it's called a cuddle cot. And they lay it in the rolling bassinets for stillborn babies. And it's to keep their bodies cold so that they don't um, decompose as fast. Um... A lot of stillborn babies, when they're born, their skin is really thin and it breaks easily. Um, 
and they kind of get, they get like nosebleeds and they're just So my my son's skin was normal. It wasn't. Um, my son had just died in my belly like hours before I had him, and I know that because he was moving around a lot the night before. So he had not, you know, decomposed too much before I delivered him. So when you looked at him, you know, besides that his coloring was a little bit off, like he just looked like he was sleeping. But nobody told me that, like, he was going to get nosebleeds and that his lips were going to turn dark and kind of, like, dry up, sort of. So, it kind of, it kind of scared me. But nobody, nobody told me about it, you know. I still was, you know, I still kissed those lips. I didn't care. Uh, it was still perfect. It just... I wish they kind of would have told me about that because it, it it scared me a little bit. I didn't know if it was supposed to be happening, basically. Anyway, so we have this cuddle cot and I lay him down in it and I order food, whatever they had. Like, I was just thankful that I was able to eat because usually when I'm, you know, I've been through things in the past that have given me really bad anxiety and stress me out I'm not able to eat at those times and it makes me sick and I just can't eat I can't sleep so I'm I was just like I'm gonna eat what I can eat because I'm sure the next few days I'm gonna be starving so um I ordered like chicken and green beans or something and I ate all of it and you know a little bit more time went by and I was so so tired like my eyes were closing I had to go to sleep and I'm thinking that they're going to come take my baby for the night to keep him somewhere because that's what the doctor kind of made it seem like earlier. So when the nurses come in, um, I tell them like, okay, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm about to fall asleep. You can, you can go ahead and take him. And they just kind of looked at me like, what? Take him? I mean, we'll see if we have somewhere to... And I was like, oh, I thought that's... I thought that was the rule. I thought you had to take him. I was like, no, leave him. Please leave him. So I was really excited <laughs> and surprised. So um, I kept his rolling bassinet right up against my bed because he had to stay on the cuddle cot to keep him cold. And I just passed out. I was so tired. Um... I remember, you know, waking up to go to the bathroom. I had to push the button to call the nurses. And so the nurses would come in and they would help me get up and walk me to the bathroom. And I was in so much pain. And my nurses were so great. Like, they, um, like, this is going to be a whole other video about my nurses. But they were amazing. They were amazing. I'm so thankful for the staff. Um, UT Southwestern in Dallas. Thank y'all. Um, so the next morning, you know, when you're in the hospital, there they, the staff comes in constantly to, you know, do your vitals and blood pressure, blood pressure, everything. Um, and they they start at like five a.m. or something. Um, so I'm up pretty early and, you know, my mom gets up with me and I'm planning on staying in the hospital for two days because that's what they had told me the day before. But, you know, the doctor comes in, comes in that day and he tells me, um, my baby's laying in the rolling bassinet and the doctor comes in. The doctor delivered my baby. Um, and he just came in to check on me. I just, you know, he's like, I just wanted to let you know that I was really impressed with you yesterday. You did such a great job and you did nothing wrong. I don't want you to think this is your fault. These things happen and, you know, we just can't tell when it's going to happen, but you did everything right. Um, 
you know, he's a beautiful baby boy. And he starts asking me if, like, do I want to do an autopsy? Um, you know, they're telling me that if I'm going to have my son buried or have a funeral, then I have to get a hold of the funeral home and they have to come within the next, like, 48 hours. And I have to decide if I'm going to do this, am I going to do that? Like, it was just all these crazy questions that I was not prepared for at all. You know, I was preparing to bring home my son alive and healthy, but he was dead and I'm having to plan his freaking funeral hours after I deliver him. And that was the most, like, I just looked at them like they were crazy. Like, it wasn't getting done. Like, that, sorry, that's not getting done. <laughs> like, that's that was my mindset at the time was, it ain't gonna happen. But that's where my, what I was talking about, that's where my grandparents came in. And they handled all of that for me. So I didn't have to think about it. I just told them, I want to be cremated. I've wanted to be cremated for a while. But making that decision... That's a whole other video, too. <laughs> I wanted him buried, so I told them that they took care of everything for me. And I didn't have to think about it. Um, so I had more visitors the next day at the hospital. Before they got there, uh, my son's dad called to say that he was going to come up there and bring his uncle to see him. And... I decided I wanted to put clothes on my baby, even though the night before I didn't. So I dressed him. Um, my mom did it. Actually, my mom dressed him. She put him in um, this little gray long sleeve onesie. And I was thinking it wasn't going to fit because it was like a preemie or a newborn. And my baby was so big, but it fit. And then put these little pants on him and they had a little teddy bear on the butt they were so cute and that outfit actually belonged to one of my friend's sons like she gave me a ton of her clothes and I had a lot of new baby clothes too but I just oh god I had so much stuff <laughs> uh, but anyways that's what I put him in and you know, these little socks and it was so cute and it fit him so perfectly and it, he just looked like my sweet little baby um I had visitors come to see him and I think a lot of people were surprised to see that I still had him in the room with me and it kind of shocked them a little bit because they weren't expecting it because you know this happens to one in four people apparently but until it affects somebody close to you or you it's like you don't realize everything that goes with this comes with a stillbirth um, anyways, I really did not want anybody there. <laughs> I really didn't. I'm glad now that they came to see him, and I appreciate everybody's love and support, but I was just so, like, as you can imagine, I was, I don't know what was going on in my head. Um, the doctor cleared me to go home that day, and I, you know, my mom was like, okay, yeah, we'll go, da, 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 da. And I was freaking out. Like, I was having a panic attack inside. I was like, I am not ready to leave my baby. <laughs> and I was going to lose it. But I also didn't want to, I didn't want to speak up and say anything. For some reason, I felt like such a burden to people at this time. Like, no, you don't, you don't have to come back. No, you don't need to come up here. Or, oh, I, I hate to make you stay in the hospital another night. Or... Or like that my son's dad wanted to come back up there the second day. I was just so surprised. Like I just couldn't believe. I don't know. I don't know why I felt that way at the time. I guess I was just in shock. But like of course everybody wanted to come be there. And of course my mom wouldn't mind staying in the hospital one more night. But I was so like scared to stay, say I want to stay here one more night. Because I thought they were going to think I was crazy or weird or something for wanting to stay with my baby again even though he was dead or they were gonna think like oh you need to let go like you need to let go right now you just stop holding on even though it had not even been 24 hours um anyway so they cleared me to go home and I just kind of told him I don't want to go home yet I want to stay one more night and I said okay that's fine you can stay as long as you want um 
that I was even gonna tell my mom, like, you could go home and stay at home tonight if you want to, you don't have to stay with me. Like, I was really thinking that I was bothering people. But of course she stayed. Um, stayed with me the whole time and she like half ass slept. <laughs> and I'd be like, mom, mom, not wanting to bother her while she was sleeping, but like I needed help. And so, but I felt so bad waking her up. I don't know why. Like I was just trying to bond with my son and you know, I couldn't move real well. I was in pain and so I was like, mom, mom, she jumps up. What, what is it, what is it? And I'm like, I can't get comfortable. Will you please, will you please help me? And she literally stayed up for like 20 minutes, like trying to fluff my pillows and rearrange my pillows, like trying them in different ways so I could get comfortable. And like, she picked my baby up and put him in the bassinet so I could get comfortable. And she called the nurses to bring in more pillows and blankets and then she'd give them back to me. And sometimes she'd have to get up just to readjust him so I could hold him. And then, you know, finally we got it to where I, I put the cuddle cot pad in the bed with me next to me and I laid my baby on it so I could just kind of spoon him, like just sleep. I just wanted to be up on him and I just wanted to kiss him over and over and over and smell him. But I just didn't want to forget how he smelled. So that's how I slept the next night and I, it, it hurt my back so bad. It was so uncomfortable, but I just wanted it to be next to me. And then I remember waking up the next morning and just being like, shit, like, this is the day I have to leave. And the night before we decided that we were gonna leave at around 12.30 the next day. And so when we got up, we ordered breakfast and I held my baby while I was eating breakfast and I couldn't even eat it because it all just tasted disgusting. It was just grossing me out. And I was freaking out. I kept watching the clock. Um, his dad came up there again um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but, uh, you know, part of the reason that everything was so chaotic, um, right after I found out, actually a few days before I found out I was pregnant, I found out that, um, my son's father had another baby on the way, um, and I had no idea. And then I found out I was pregnant a few days later. And so the whole, my whole pregnancy was just crazy. Anyways, he, come, he came back up there and his daughter's mother, his girlfriend, she was with him. And I let her come in and it was the first time I met her. And you know, I could tell she was upset she had been waiting on Reich to get here too. And she asked if she could touch him and I said yes. So she, you know, she kind of put her hand on him. And I could see that she wanted to, so. I said, do you want to hold him? And she was like, yes, yes, yes. And so she picked him up and she kissed his little hand and held him and She made him, um, she had sewn him a little hat and a blanket and stuff. And I wish I would have wrapped him up in it. But I wish I would have brought <laughs> a lot of things from home for him to use just so he would, you know, so his scent would be on those things. It sounds crazy, but. I can still remember what he smells like and I hope I don't ever forget and I haven't opened his clothes that he wore in the hospital in a long time so I don't know if they even still smell like him. Anyways, they left shortly after that or she left shortly after that and he stayed. Um, and when the time rolled around to leave, I was... Um, everybody kind of, my mom was giving me time alone with him, and then she came back up, and, 
um, well, I took a shower. Um, it was the first shower I, I had taken in the two days that I had been there. And it's like the most amazing shower ever. <laughs> um, I got out and I put clean clothes on and I I changed Reich's clothes. I put him in a this little onesie that had a teddy bear on the front of it because I wanted to keep the clothes that he was wearing in the hospital because it was the only you know it was the only thing he ever wore. I took the diaper off. I took his diaper off. I took his little pants and the onesie and the socks and I packed it all up with his hats and I put him in the little teddy bear onesie and his arms and his legs were so long so they were like sticking out <laughs> of the sleeves but he looked so cute and remember at this point he was his nose was starting to bleed more and it would make me so sad and freak me out when I'd, I'd pick him up and his he'd turn him a certain way and it would just come out of his nose and I'd wipe it off on my clothes <laughs> and he was so cold from having to keep him on that cuddle cot all the time for the last two nights so his skin was just freezing and his little lips were like black at this point and you know he's very clearly not alive and I knew that I was going to have to leave him. Um, and I just kept telling myself to dad. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I know everybody was worried about me because that's what they were thinking too. <laughs> like, I didn't know how I was going to live another day without my baby. Um. I just kept kissing him and he was so cold and he was so soft and he smelled so good. And I remember the way his little lips felt on my lips. And his little hands. Um, so they get all my discharge paperwork ready and they're telling me about my medications and when to take them and um making my follow-up appointment and just, you know, having a counselor or a therapist come talk to me or whatever. Um, and then the nurse comes in to unhook my IV and stuff and I'm in there with my baby by myself, you know, my family left to give me some time with them. And, holding him and rocking him and I'm just trying to stay calm because I know that I'm about to have to leave him and I can't even describe the feeling I really can't <laughs> um so she unhooks my IVs and stuff and the nurse that's coming to take Reich comes in and you know, the reason I didn't want to be wheeled away from him, I wanted I wanted them to take Reich and take him because I didn't want to be leaving him alone in that room. Like, I didn't want to... So I'm sitting there on the edge of the bed and I'm holding right like this and I'm just freaking bawling my eyes out and I don't want to let go and I'm just crying and rocking him and kissing his head and just trying to remember everything about him and the nurses you can tell they're sad and they're uncomfortable and I'm just freaking out. And so I kiss him and um, I lay him up, pick him up and lay him down in the rolling basket. And I go back to the bed and sit there and 
I just start crying harder. I jump up, but I say, wait, wait, wait. I want to kiss him one more time. And so I leaned over to the best man I can do. And I held his little hand. And then she walked out of the room with him. And that was the last time I saw him at the hospital. And so my grandparents and my mom and my ex-husband come back in. Um, and they help me get into the wheelchair. And I'm still crying. And they're pushing me out of the hospital. And, you know, there's people... You know, just looking at me like, oh, I wonder what she's doing. And nobody knows that, you know, I just gave birth to my son after carrying him for more than nine months. They just see, you know, a girl who's not pregnant anymore in a wheelchair being pushed out empty-handed. And, you know, I was leaving the hospital hurting more than when I went in. And I was just so sad that I had to leave my baby and I didn't get to hold him while they were pushing me out, you know, all proud and showing him off. <sighs> so I get to my grandparents' car and they help me in and shut the door and I went home without Reich. And I felt like I was going to die. I wanted to die. I wanted to die and be with my babies. I was so sad. I'm still so sad, but it's like those first few days, like a few weeks, but especially those first few days coming home and not being pregnant anymore and not having my baby I really didn't know how I was going to do it um, yeah this is right he was born um, at 10 11 p.m. on November 23rd, 2018, at UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. Sorry, my um, iPad, my iPad, <laughs> my iPad ran out of room and I had to delete some stuff. Um, but yeah, my son was perfect. He was so cute so cute um my cousin jennifer got me this bear and he's 22 inches long like reich was look how big that is and he weighs 8.7 pounds and i just can't believe that that fit in my belly <laughs> um all of my friends and family have been amazing like everybody has been so supportive and everybody's wanted to help and reach out to me just to make sure I'm okay and like it's crazy to just see how many people really care about you like give a shit about you want to make sure that you're okay and I appreciate all of you even for just thinking about me thank you <laughs> um I'll make more videos about, you know, other parts of this story because I feel like there's so much that I left out, especially, you know, I want to talk about the different things I experienced during my pregnancy with Reich, like different places we went and just, you know, what it was like to be pregnant with him because I miss him a lot and any chance I get to talk about him to anybody who will listen then that's what I'll be doing. Well, if you've made it to the end of this very long video, 
thank you. <laughs> and I have to work in a couple hours, so hopefully my poofy eyes aren't that poofy, <laughs> but they will be. Thanks for watching, and I'll be talking to all of you soon. I knew you before I knew your name I loved you before I saw your face I longed for you for all of that time And I held your heart in mine I kissed you a hundred million I tasted the tears that I cried I held you, my beautiful child And I'll keep your heart in mine I love you to the moon and back My little winter bed I know you know how much that is Cause you're already there And I never knew a love like this could ever possibly exist I love you to the moon and back As long as I live I see you in all of the stars Shine brightly right The night sky above